Hi, my name is Maria Voronsova and I'm a grass taxonomist working at Kew Gardens. I've been studying the grasses and grasslands of Madagascar for 10 years, but this is not the subject of my talk today. Um, today, I would like to give you some highlights of my work on inequality in botanical knowledge and especially inequality between Madagascar and Britain as an example. Our global understanding of plant diversity and plant extinction is very uneven and I think many of our community don't understand how the inequality works and because of that we can't tackle the inequality and it's difficult to work towards having a more even a more fair understanding of plant diversity worldwide. Today is not going to be a traditionally structured talk. It's I'm going to give you a series of highlights um, and personal realizations that we have had in inequality about how inequality works in our project and if you know these things already, that's fantastic. And if you don't, I hope that will contribute to your understanding of how our discipline works. A couple of years ago, I started working on a project to document all plant extinction in the world. We expected that extinction risk would be driven by plant lineage and plant family but actually extinction risk appears to be driven by geography. If you have a look at this map, the pink countries have extinctions recorded, green countries have rediscovered all of their extinction, and dark grey countries have more than one species extinct and more than one species rediscovered. And these grey countries of multiple extinction and multiple rediscovery are not in the highly biodiverse re regions, which I found was a little bit suspicious. So what can be going on? Why are we seeing this strange and unnatural looking pattern of extinctions? I inserted this slide here from a paper by Carson Mayer in 2015 because in my experience our scientific community does not talk about the core message of this slide. Economics are a basic driver of how well we know our biological diversity. Inequality is complex and different small aspects of inequality compound and they make each other worse. Um, and often what we do in the first world and in the global north is we try to interfere to help our colleagues in biodiversity rich countries and often we fail through not understanding how to do it properly. On this slide you will see that African countries have lower GDP and they universally have lower inventory completeness of vertebrates. This pattern is not limited to vertebrates, fortunately. Um, this slide is the fairy tale Madagascar seen by biologists. Madagascar has baobabs. Madagascar has nearly 90% vascular plant endemicity, almost 10,000 endemic plant species. It's diverse paradise on earth. Um, the Madagascar of biologists is difficult to reconcile with the ordinary everyday Madagascar that its residents are familiar with. Madagascar is the poorest country currently not at war and most of its people are busy trying to make a living largely by growing rice. Many of you listening to this talk will recognize the building in this picture, which is the Jardin de Plant, the big botanical garden in Paris. And until 1948, every specimen of plant and animal collected in Madagascar was delivered and stored here. No specimens were left in Madagascar until 1948, not a single one. This is a photograph I took of the biggest herbarium in Madagascar, in the Zimbazaza Botanical Garden. 
uh, we completed a database of all Madagascar grasses that we were studying in the world, and we found that three quarters of the species are represented in the country's biggest herbarium, but one quarter is not. And sadly, it makes it impossible to identify Madagascar grasses in Madagascar. Imagine that you're a student in Madagascar studying your grasses. You collect a grass, you go to the herbarium to identify it, but only three quarters of the species are represented in the herbarium. So if you collected the grass from the unlucky 25%, you have no chance of being able to identify it. And this is a map I made to describe my working process to understand the taxonomy of Madagascar grasses. The plants and my colleagues are in Madagascar. The biggest reference collection is in Paris. Comparing it to African taxonomy of the same species on the continent, I need to consult the herbaria in Kew and herbaria in South Africa. For grasses, virtual herbaria and online specimens are not good enough to see inside the spikelets. So my daily working process effectively has to involve travel between four countries, which is very expensive, very inefficient. And even more importantly, the working process required for Madagascar grasses excludes the vast majority of Malagasy scientists who cannot afford to travel to three countries. What I've told you so far are things most people know who work in tropical botany. We all know that tropical plant specimens are concentrated in northern temperate countries. And I would like us to think about a different aspect of this problem. Uh, Amy Camus, who described almost all of Madagascar's endemic grasses, never visited Madagascar. She described all the species in Paris. The grass in the picture, Panicum subhistrix, it has small thin glabrous leaves under rocks and it has wide leaves with fewer hairs when it comes out from under the rock. And this species was given four different names by Madame Camus for four different morphologies. A taxonomist who lived and grew up with their plants, a taxonomist who walks past their study subject every day, would never make that error. It's, it would be intuitively obvious to any of you that Panicum subhistrix is all the same species, but field observations are essential for us to get an intuitive understanding of the variability of the species. Remote taxonomy is inherently lower in its quality, and to date, nobody has studied why and in what way remote taxonomy is different from taxonomy done on plants that you live near. It's a complicated subject and I think there is no straightforward answer. Uh, French foresters uh, were the first um, to apply formal Latin classification to the plants of Madagascar and their aim was clear. They needed to find new valuable timber species for the island. So the botanical study of Madagascar started just in the 18% of the island that people thought were natural and the rest was completely ignored. So this doesn't quite continue to the current day, but it's still the case that scientific paradigm of botany in Madagascar studies natural vegetation of protected areas, but not normal land we see towns and near roads. The majority of Madagascar is actually inaccessible to botanical exploration. Usually when I give this talk, I have plenty of photos of vehicles turned upside down, awful roads, um, impenetrable 
floods which make it impossible for botanists to travel and these are indeed part of the daily reality in Madagascar but this picture actually shocked me more uh, because the armed bandits of Madagascar have become so famous they now have a computer game dedicated to them called the Dahal which apparently shows people the realities of life in southern Madagascar. So I would like us to think about how does one put, how does one understand the distribution of one's plants if it's not possible to travel because armed bandits might be around the corner. Even less of cover, the most common grass in the British Isles was recorded 300,000 times. The most common grass in Madagascar was recorded less than 300 times. That's a difference of 1,003 orders of magnitude. Wow. And now I'd like us to move on to the human dimension of inequality. I, I would like everybody listening to stop for a minute and think, which is your third language? We all have a first language we grew up with. You probably have a second language that you're quite good at. And what is your language number three? So in Madagascar, all scientists have to publish papers in their language number three in a daily basis. Many um, American and European institutions provide free access to publications and specimen images to African institutions. Unfortunately, African institutions such as the University of Antananarive are not able to provide email addresses for their staff. People use private email addresses and that makes them ineligible for institutional logins. So effectively, globally digitized scientific literature and many digital specimens are not available to scientists in Madagascar. The internet connections in Madagascar are much more expensive in dollars than they are in the United States or in Britain. I'm sad that I'm here presenting this talk to you today and none of my Malagasy colleagues are here to present this talk instead of me or to even be here in the audience because the video quality in Antananarive is so bad and connections are so expensive, we were not able to send people to attend this conference. And this is the unhappy consequence. The study is about vertebrates. The majority of papers published about Malagasy organisms are not published by Malagasy authors at Malagasy institutions. And with complex compounded inequality, this is very difficult to change. I have been part of a big effort by Q and by Missouri Botanical Garden to help Madagascar build its botanical capacity um, and help Madagascar inventory its plants. And actually, the results to date are really rather impressive. On this slide, you will see the calculations we did for this talk. Um, the Missouri Botanical Garden and Q trained more than 250 people in Madagascar since the 1990. And we think that two thirds of collections made in Madagascar since 1990 have a Malagasy first collector. Missouri identified 77 priority areas for plant conservation, many of which have now become protected areas and they're currently running 13 community-based conservation projects across Madagascar, which is quite an incredible statistic. I didn't dare attempt to make a list of all of my Malagasy teachers, colleagues and friends who contributed to teaching us um, about their view of how society and the scientific system works as viewed from Madagascar. But I would like to say thank you to all of them, especially here. Um, and I'd like to say thank you for your time in trying to understand what our discipline may look like from the point of view of the scientists in Madagascar. Thank you. Goodbye.